Hello, everyone. My name is Nikita. And in this presentation, I'll introduce our work on Sabre, Hardware Accelerated Snapshot Compression for Serverless Micro VMs. This work was done in MIT with the support of our industry partners at Intel and colleagues from Cornell University. So as most of you know, serverless is a cloud computing paradigm that allows deployment of cloud services without initial provisioning of resources. Upon receiving user requests, also known functions, serverless spin up the corresponding execution pods and scale them out based on the current demand. When there is, uh, those pods, they run in isolation from each other, and when the resources are not longer needed, serverless can terminate them, therefore achieving a pay-as-you-go model. So the serverless pods can be based on containers, sandboxes, or serverless micro VMs, and serverless micro VMs is the focus of this talk. So a micro VM is a lightweight virtualization technology that allows deployment of type one virtual machines as fast as within sub-seconds. It's secure, Low, they have, those micro VMs have low memory footprint and fast boot time. So given that micro VMs can boot relatively fast, uh, the software stacks of cloud applications are usually complex and contains of many layers that needs to be initialized. As the result, the first invocation of serverless functions can be as high as seconds. And uh, the most common and practical solution to mitigate it is to snapshot the VM state by moving physical pages into the storage. And then the system can restore from the snapshots through on-demand paging. So given that snapshotting allows to dramatically reduce the overhead of core start, its on-demand paging still makes the first invocation to be an order of magnitude slower than consequent. And a way to further improve it is to use page prefetching from snapshots. So page prefetching is based by moving pages from snapshot into the VM upon the uh, function invocation, and, uh, instead of relying entirely on on-demand paging. And this prefetching can cover all pages or a subset of pages, such as, for example, working sets. Uh, so there have been many algorithms proposed to make this prefetching efficient, and independently of the underlying algorithm, additional page compression is very desired here, as it will enable prefetching even faster and will further reduce the overhead of cold boot. But this compression must, be, must have low overhead and also should support very fast decompression. So therefore, using hardware of load is a natural solution here, and there have been a lot of proposals on hardware accelerators for compression in the past, such as, for example, Intel Quick Assist technology. However, the problem with most of them is that they're not really agnostic to system and infrastructures. They only exist in certain clouds with specialized servers, and their standard interfaces with applications often raise a lot of security and scalability concerns when using in public clouds at scale. So this work is based uh, on a different approach to hardware acceleration in the cloud, introduced in the first generation Xeon processors, also known as Sapphire Rapids. And uh, the accelerator I'll be talking about today is called Near Memory Analytic Accelerator, or IEA. So now let me give an overview of three features of IEA that distinguish it from previous mainline uh, cloud accelerators. So first of all, the accelerator is placed on chip. It's integrated near the last level cache. and has low latency interfaces with memory and IO fabric. So such tight integration enables high performance of the accelerator, and it requires no of chip bandwidth. This is very important, as PCIe of chip bandwidth is usually shared with things like storage, networks, GPUs, and it's a very constrained resource in, in data centers. So another uh, feature is that IEA similarly to, uh, it supports, natively supports the shared virtual memory programming model, and similarly to CPUs, it can access process address space using virtual addresses. This is very important for our use case, as each micro VM runs, in, run, runs as its own process, and it relies on the OS native memory management to reinforce security and scalability. So under the hood, uh, the accelerator works similarly to CPU memory management. It's based on IOMMU, which reads translations from the address translation cache, it can uh, request the host, host kernel page tables and initiate hardware page faults through so-called page request service mechanism. And with, uh, with, with the SPM, Accelerator can, have, uh, can support flexible OS native memory management and memory isolation. So without the SVM, secure and, trans, uh, and scalable integration of accelerators into the micro VM ecosystems would be challenging. So finally, Sapphire Rapid CPUs come with a set of ISA extensions for efficient communication with accelerators. So internally, IEA consists of multiple processing elements that communicate with the memory over DMA through the work queues and completions. The software creates jobs and submits them into the work queues, and then it can wait for completion either using pooling or things like UM wait. Uh, so in Q command is a new x86 instruction introduced specifically for atomic and secure communication with accelerators, like for basically for implementing atomic job submission into those accelerators. Within Q command, a single accelerator can be shared through the shared work use among a large number of processes. And given that a single host can run up to hundreds or even thousands of micro VMs, uh, all of them should be able to access the accelerator. 
So now let me give you a, a brief overview of our characterization of IA. So as a part of this work, we developed a set of microbenchmarks to understand the performance implications of IA on compressing memory pages and snapshots. So we open source benchmarks available uh, by this link uh, on the right. So uh, we, we run a lot of experiments, but now let me focus on two most important ones. So the first one on this slide shows uh, the single PE in memory compute capability of the accelerator and compares it with software. So for now, IA implements deflate compression. There is nothing specific in using deflate for snapshot compression, and other algorithms such as Snappy, LZ4, Z standard, they can also be potentially integrated uh, in the same way as IA in the future. So this graph shows the comparison uh, of uh, hardware and software implementation of the same algorithm on the Silesia corpus, uh, which is the standard way to benchmark compression uh, algorithms and accelerators. So the y-axis shows the average compression time in milliseconds and the x-axis different compression modes. So for example, uh, uh, the dynamic uh, deflate compression here achieves uh, up to 7x compression ratio, and it can be accelerated with hardware up to 5.5 times. The static compression compresses up to 5x, uh, and it, it's 11 times faster with IA, and the accelerator can do decompression 10 times faster than software. And this graph uh, on the right shows similar results, but for a snapshot of dirty pages uh, of a gRPC server, and uh, it's similar trend, and the decompression is also 10 times faster. So the most interesting scenario for us is how Accelerator can handle uh, hardware page faults and handle input from the storage. So here, because this is how, how uh, memory restoration happens in microVMs. So here we uh, map a bunch of snapshot files and expose them through the page request service into the Accelerator. And on the other side, it writes pages through the shared virtual memory into the process memory. So that's our setup. And uh, the pages are being brought from the disk uh, through, the, through the hardware page faults. So this plot here shows, uh, shows the result uh, with the time in milliseconds on the y-axis and the size of data that needs to be uh, prefetched and decompressed on the x-axis. So this is how the latency of sequential I.O. read looks like from our storage. This is the latency of decompressing in memory using a single PE. And this is the latency of decompressing from the disk while handling page faults. And uh, as you can see, the, I the decompression entirely overlaps with the page fault handling and I.O which means that the latency of decompression can be entirely hidden behind those things. Uh, in addition, uh, I want to say that a single PE can do up to 4 gigabytes per second in the blocking mode, and uh, Safari IP CPU can have up to 32 PEs, so the accelerator can also handle fast storage tiers. So we have more experiments in the paper, but in general, uh, putting all together, uh, so what I want to say is this accelerator can do up to 10 times faster decompression than software, and it can be additionally accelerated 17 times with additional parallelization. It can efficiently handle 4 KB pages. Uh, its processing fully overlaps with I.O. and page fault handling, so it has no visible overhead of decompression. And uh, it can be integrated with applications and systems in a transparent and secure way uh, through the SVM and ISA support. So all this means that we can now use this accelerator to build a practical solution for compression and prefetching pages from serverless snapshots. So this is how it works. We have a bare metal server with a, a bunch of IA accelerators and we spin up a micro VM on top of a type one hypervisor. And then the micro VMs can access IA through the NQ command, through the shared virtual memory, and the accelerator uh, can access storage through the page request service. And then other micro VMs can do the same at the same time in, in, in isolation uh, from each other, again, thanks to the SVM and NQ command. So this is how snapshot creation works. It's pretty simple. So we run IAA first in the statistics pass and collect the statistics of data across all the pages that needs to be snapshotted and make the Huffman tables that feed these pages. And then uh, we use all those uh, Huffman tables, the same Huffman tables for compressing all the pages. So this two-phase operation in the IA terminology is called Kent compression. That's the best way of compressing sparse pages. And then the, the, the compressed data uh, go to the snapshot file and the metadata into the partition file. Uh, so we, and with this, we can support any arbitrary types of snapshots and working set files. And the, the page prefetching happens directly through the scatter gather DMA of the accelerator and on flight decompression. So we first read uh, the partition data and create a set of descriptors for the accelerator. And then uh, the accelerator starts reading pages through the page request service and hardware page faults from the storage and install them through the scatter gather DMA uh, over the SVM directly into the guest physical memory. And it's a fully zero copy path, unfortunately, as we found uh, in some hardware. Uh, the the scattergather DMA is not efficient when handling uh, like very sparse pages. So it's a workaround. We also implement another way 
when we decompress into a buffer and then install pages from there in software using user fault FD. So this is uh, the results of micro benchmarking our our uh, our snapshotting and prefetching unit. So the plot shows the prefetching time of pages from the storage on the y-axis versus the uh, average sparsity of pages in the storage. So the sparsity denotes basically how many pages are continuous per a single decompression job. So for example, for sparsity two, every two pages in this experiment are continuous. They form a single decompression and the DMA job, and then there is an empty page in between that doesn't go anywhere. So this is how uh, the latency of prefetching uncompressed snapshots look like. So, uh, so this is using uh, direct I.O. when uh, we just directly read data from, from, the, uh, from, from, from the snapshot by passing OS page cache. So that's the fastest way to read data from storage. And this is how uh, prefetching looks like through, the, sort of through our zero copy way. So it's, it's much faster than prefetching uncompressed data. And uh, it scales uh, down to sparsity of four. And then uh, we start using this our workaround uh, to basically maintain, uh, we maintain the, uh, the speed up for very sparse pages as well. So in general, in this experiment, the average compression ratio that was here is 2.3x, and the prefetching speed up was up to 2.2x. So it's very similar to each other, which is achieved due to this uh, like overlap of uh, decompression with page fault handling and uh, I.O. So for end-to-end -end experiments, we integrate uh, all of this into the commercial Firecracker uh, MicroVM. It's a KVM-based uh, MicroVM, which is very popular in serverless clouds. So in our test bed, uh, we have the, uh, so, so we, we, uh, we run the system over Intel Xeon scalable CPU with a bunch of IEA instances, and then we integrate the snapshotting and prefetching unit into the Firecracker MicroVM memory restoration thread. Uh, and we run Firecracker Container D on top in order to be able to execute end-to-end -end serverless uh, fast images from Docker containers. And the whole environment is managed by, uh, by the VHive infrastructure from University of Edinburgh, which is an open sourced framework for serverless experimentation, which we use to uh, manage snapshots and invoke functions over gRPC and do the measurements. So we experiment with two types of snapshots. Uh, the snapshots based on dirty pages and the snapshots based on working sets. Uh, so for briefness, I'll only talk about the second one as it's more practical. Uh, we implement the record and replay technique also as the baseline. So this is also from the VHive paper. And in short, the way how it works in record and replay, uh, we first record the pages that are getting access during the very first invocation of a function. And then we only pre uh, prefetch those pages during asynchronous applications. So there's just one way of doing uh, prefetching. Also, like other algorithms, they, all, they will also work with, uh, with the Sabre. And we experiment with 18 different end-to-end -end serverless functions from three serverless benchmark suites. So this graph shows uh, the results. Uh, the, the left uh, y-axis shows the achieved compression ratio for a snapshot uh, for a given function. And the white y-axis shows the prefetching speed up of pages, uh, shown in blue bar, and the end-to-end -end speed up uh, with the red bar. So we run it for, for, for the 18 functions, and the highest compression ratio for those particular snapshots of those particular functions uh, was 4.7x, which resulted in prefetching speed up uh, of 55%, and it's, it, like, eventually it resulted in additional 20%, up to 20% uh, of uh, cold start latency reduction in comparison with, uh, with the most optimized uh, record and replay uh, baseline that we use here. And this is for some functions, so you can see our paper for other benchmarks and other snapshotting techniques as well. Okay, so to conclude, I would like to say uh, in this work, we propose to use closely coupled near memory accelerators for fast page compression and prefetching uh, in serverless microVMs. We performed the first detailed characterization of the IEA hardware, uh, and based on this, we build a practical infrastructure agnostic, transparent, uh, and scalable solution for compressing and prefetching snapshot pages for microVMs, and we integrate it with end-to-end uh, -end serverless uh, functions. So, yeah, uh, we open sourced our benchmarks, uh, also the system, so you can, uh, you can play with this. Uh, the Sapphire Rapid CPUs with IA are already available in public clouds, and with, yeah, with this, I would like to conclude my talk and I'll be happy to handle questions.